The Pilot Elite S was a very popular fountain pen produced in the 1960s and 70s, and Pilot recently decided to resurrect this model in 2003 with this, the Pilot E95S. It's available in black with gold hardware, as well as the burgundy and ivory color that we have here today. The bottom finial is flat with a slight dome shape, as is the top finial, and the top finial is separated from the cap with a flush gold band. We then have a spring-loaded metal clip that says pilot at the bottom. You can't actuate it from the top, but you can easily pull it from the bottom, and it's very functional. The cap is long, and it has a gradual tapered down to Elite, paying homage to its original model. And then we have a two-piece cap band that's painted on top of the cap. It's stylized, and on the back there's a cutout, which reads Pilot Japan. We then have a little metal band, followed by a step down to the barrel. The cap is a pull-off cap, which reveals one of the least expensive gold nibs that Pilot makes today. It's an inlaid nib, and it reads 14K585, denoting a 58.5% gold content, Pilot, M for the size of the tipping material, Japan, and then the date code. And on the back, we can see a black plastic feed and a little notch at the top to allow ink to flow into the pen. The section is long and has a gradual taper. And then we have a metal band followed by a flange and then a step down to the barrel. The barrel is very short in relation to the section and the cap. In the hand, the pen is well-balanced and lightweight, though it's a little bit short for long writing sessions. And luckily, the cap posts deeply and securely. It's a friction-fit cap that uses leaf springs inside, so you don't feel a clicking, but just a gradual resistance as you push it in. In the hand, when it's posted, it's a full-size fountain pen. It's extremely well-balanced and lightweight, easy to use for long writing sessions. In terms of size comparisons, here's the E95S, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. And here they are posted. Before we get into the disassembly of the E95S, I wanted to take a moment here to compare it with its predecessor, the Elite Short. Both pens proportions are very similar, but the E95S is a little bit longer and wider than the Elite Short. The top finial of the E95S is flat with a subtle dome shape, and the Elite Short has a taper that goes towards the clip. The top finial's band on the E95S is quite a bit wider than the Elite Short, and then both clips are spring-loaded, though they're stylized a little bit differently. The Elite Short has a recessed portion at the top with pilot engraved, and the modern E95S has a little bit more of a streamlined design with Pilot engraved at the bottom. Both pens then have a leet at the bottom of the cap, followed by a two-piece cap band that's painted onto the cap. The E95S has a little bit more of a squared off look to it, whereas the vintage version has a V-shape. We then have perhaps the most significant difference between these two pens, and it's subtle to see on camera. The Elite Short at the bottom of the cap has a little bit of a beveled edge, whereas the E95S is squared off. And in the hand, this one does feel a little bit more comfortable and rounded. Let's take a look at these pens uncapped. Uncapped, the Elite Short is again a little bit shorter than the E95S. Both feature 14 karat gold nibs, and the Elite Short was also offered in an inlaid nib, but I have a semi-hooded version here. Both pens then have long tapering sections that go to a gold band. On the Elite Short, the flange at the end of the gold band is flush with the barrel, but on the E95S, it actually stands a little bit proud of the barrel. Let's take a look at these pens posted. Both caps post deeply and securely, but again, the E95S is a little bit longer than the Elite Short. If we look at where the cap butts up against the flange, on the Elite Short, 
The cap stands a little bit proud of the back flange, but on the E95S, it's flush to that back flange. In the hand, this again feels a little bit more rounded and curved, whereas this has a more dramatic step up. Disassembling the Pilot E95S, the cap pulls off. And if we look inside, we can see that there is a cap liner that's captured in there with the leaf springs. It's a little bit challenging to take off, so for regular maintenance, I would leave this in place and just clean it with warm soapy water. The barrel unscrews from the section. And then we have a connector piece, which you can unscrew from the section as well. And that has a little gold ring attached to it. And then we have the section itself with the nib and feed. If I pull in some LED lighting, we can see at the bottom of the feed, there are two notches. Uh, using a special tool, you can rotate this feed and pull the nib out. However, I don't have that tool. So for regular maintenance and cleaning, I just clean this with a bulb syringe. And at this point, we have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble, I'll start with the connector piece. The gold ring slides right on place. Make sure that the flange is pointing towards the barrel. And then this screws onto the section. Next, we'll attach our barrel. And lastly, our cap. And at this point, we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Pilot E95S, today I selected Diamine's Writer's Blood, which is a deep red that I think matches this pen pretty nicely. This pen didn't come with a converter in the box, but many are shipped with the Con40 converter. Personally, I'm not a big fan of using the Con40 um, in general, but especially on this pen. And the reason for it is if I insert this, you can see that the piston all the way back is still not visible, so you can't really tell what your ink level is at all on this pen. So what I'll use instead is an empty cartridge. I have a little vial here I'm going to use to help hold it upright. Take the cap off. And with a blunt needle syringe, I'll drop some ink and place it into the cartridge. And we'll do one more. That's pretty full. We'll then take our cartridge Place it into the bottom of the section and push. Put, put the barrel on and the cap. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Pilot E95S. Cap pulls off and I am going to post it. And we have a 14 karat gold medium nib. And it's an expertly tuned nib. I show this off in my nib tuning video as an example of a very well tuned nib. It's smooth, it's wet, it's just a joy to write with. Our ink. Diamine. Writer's blood. For flex, I'm going to turn the page. Mm -hmm. 
You can push out a little bit of line variation, but not a large amount. And then for reverse writing, Ugh, it is very scratchy, feels like it's tearing up the page. Um, I guess you do get, you know, uh, a thinner line this way, but at the sacrifice of your writing experience. So I wouldn't recommend this for reverse writing. So what do I think of the Pilot E95S? I really like this pen. I think it's a very approachable pen. It's extremely easy to travel with given its small size. Um, it's a, an affordable gold nib that writes beautifully. This is one of the nicest nibs that I have in my collection. And I really gravitate towards the Elite Short. So I really appreciate that Pilot has continued forward with that design in the modern E95S. I also really like this color scheme. You don't see it very often in fountain pens and it's um, both fun and mature looking at the same time. In terms of areas to improve on this pen, I only have a few. Uh, one point is the clip. I love that it's spring loaded. It's extremely easy to get over fabrics and it's very secure. However, I wish that it would be able to be actuated from the back similar to my Lamy 2000, which has this squared off back so I can easily just open and close it. On this one, as well as the vintage version, you can't do that. Besides that, the nib again is a beautiful nib, very well tuned. Um, the inlaid design is quite striking but it's also difficult to disassemble. So if you wanted to do some extra work on this nib or maybe even swap it out for a different size, you're kind of out of luck with this pen unless you can hunt down the tool that's used to disassemble it. The only other issue that I really have with this pen is the filling system. Yes, you can eyedropper a cartridge and have a good supply of ink, but the Con 40, as I showed you, it fits in here fine, but you have no way of seeing the ink level, which personally I find a little bit disappointing. I wish that there was a way for Pilot to have fit the Con 70 converter in this pen. Um, maybe they would have had to make the feed a little bit shorter so that the long converter would be able to fit in here. But I mean, you can fit the Con 40 if you're in a uh, pinch to fill this pen, you know, from the bottom up. And of course you can use a cartridge converter. So you kind of have to know that coming in on it. Um, and then lastly, I kind of discussed this at length. The biggest difference between the old and the new is this band and how it's been designed with the cap. I did find this kind of um, sharp when I first got this pen, when I was used to this, which has a nice smooth feel. It's nothing, you know, disturbing. It's nothing to really deter people from buying this pen. But if you are coming from a vintage model, it might feel a little bit alien in the hand. But besides that, it's a very compact pen. It's a pen that's easy to travel with very easy to qu take quick notes so great for in the office use and if you are a journaler or someone who just likes to write for long periods of time it's an extremely comfortable pen for long long writing sessions so i am a big fan of this pen and i hope that pilot continues to produce this pen maybe even offer it in a few other colors and that just leaves me to say Thank you for watching.